So in this lesson, I'm going to talk about some ways that you should be thinking about Angular JS as you move forward. Just some general talking points that you should keep in mind as you start to digest some of the concepts that are presented to you. First and foremost, best practices. Angular JS is built around encouraging the developer to utilize best practices. Best practices lead to cleaner code, they lead to better performance in code, to better testability in code. All of these things are going to happen if you use the best practices provided to you in Angular. But what does best practice actually mean? It's an often used term, but it's a very general way to describe it. So first of all, model view whatever is separation. This means, exactly as we discussed before, using the model view and whatever the third component is, is it a presentation layer, is it a view model layer, using that appropriately. Nothing in the view should be in the presenting layer. Nothing in the presenting layer should deal with the model in an inappropriate way. Compartmentalizing it in appropriate ways is always a best practice. Next, dry programming. Don't repeat yourself. This is huge in Angular, and this goes with it being an incredibly modular framework. You shouldn't have to ever repeat yourself. There is going to be a little bit of boilerplate code here and there, but in general, if you find yourself writing the same thing over and over, you're almost certainly doing it wrong, and there's a better way to do it. So don't repeat yourself. Last of all, don't hack. Now, this one might seem like a strange one to you, but it's an important one. So as you're going through Angular, if it seems like you are writing a hacky solution, something that's maybe bending the way something isn't supposed to be used, or maybe it's even you're explicitly going against the way something is described as it's supposed to be used, it's probably wrong, and you probably shouldn't be doing it that way. You shouldn't have to hack in Angular. It shouldn't have to happen. There is almost always a way in which you can find a clean, reusable solution that fits within the way the framework should work. So best practices, don't repeat yourself and don't hack. Next, don't write bad code. Now this one seems like it's a little redundant, but there are some differences. It's easy to write bad code in Angular, and this might seem weird, but until you understand a lot of the concepts fundamentally, you might find that you're leaning on certain abilities in a controller or something in the view. You seem like you're leaning on something in a way that you shouldn't, and this is very common. Make sure that the performance of your code is something to keep in mind, because it can get bad quite quickly, and you will notice this as your application begins to scale. I mentioned this before, but it's worth going over as part of the bad code section. Reusability. Your code should be very, very reusable. A lot of the aspects of Angular allow for reusable code, and you should absolutely be using it wherever you can. Services, directives, all of these things lead to reusable code, and you should use this to your advantage. Finally, don't try to fit a square peg into a round hole. This goes along with the concept of using things in kind of a hacky way, but you're going to have access to a lot of built-in features of Angular, and the way that they're supposed to be used might not immediately be clear to you, but it's worth going through and making sure that you're using them in the correct way whatever that might be, because as I said before, all parts of Angular are designed to work in a really efficient way, and working against that efficiency is only hurting your code base. Next, test. Testing, as I mentioned, is huge in Angular. Write your tests. Once you get in the habit of writing tests, it goes very, very quickly. The testing framework is incredibly robust. You will find that you can get very comfortable with it very quickly. Writing the test is an essential part of writing a good Angular application because it is so critical to writing something that will scale or can be provided to other developers and making sure that your code isn't broken. Testing is important. Next, this is a little bit of a controversial one. Some developers might not agree with me on this one, but a lot of people are huge proponents of test-driven development. I actually don't necessarily agree with this. I find that test-driven development does become a little cumbersome because when you're writing the tests, sometimes you're not sure exactly what you want to build, and the proponents will say that if you're not sure exactly how you're going to build it, then tests will help you figure that out, and that may be true. But ultimately, test-driven development doesn't have to happen for you to write good tests in Angular application. Ultimately, as long as a robust test suite makes it in with the shipped code, then everything's good, and it doesn't have to be test-driven development. Broaden your understanding. Now, this is a pretty general one, but as you go through Angular, you are going to find that the learning curve is steep. So you're going to be able to do some cool stuff initially, 
but you really have to spend some time really getting into the meat of an application to understand the nuance of Angular and to understand the way it works. And so in order to combat the steep learning curve, practice being curious, want to know things. When you don't know how something works, make sure that instead of sort of glazing over and going, well, this is good enough, really get in and figure out, oh, how does this directive work? Or why is this happening? Actually dig in and learn, teach yourself, make it happen because it's only going to help you. Finally, refactoring. You're going to find that as you get better with Angular, you're going to want to refactor a lot. As you get more comfortable with best practices and whatnot, refactoring is going to become a big part of what you're doing. I recommend this a lot because refactoring your code teaches you a ton about how Angular works. It makes you a better developer. It gives cleaner code. There's no reason to not do it. So refactor all the time as it can only help you. You might be a little surprised at this one. And a lot of people know this, but the AngularJS source code is actually very readable. In the 1.2.0 release, it's about 20,000 lines long. And that may sound like a lot, but there's actually a really outstanding set of comments in there. About half, I'd say, is commented code. It's really good, and it's worth reading through. I highly recommend it. It's definitely very consumable, and if you're stuck on something, then I certainly recommend going to this section where that's actually using and reading through the source code. Actually get into it. It really helps you understand how Angular works. Something you'll find out very quickly, error messages are bad in Angular. This is something that the core team is working on all the time, but the error messages are awful. For now, the error messages are not going to help you out very much, and so reading the source code can help you a lot when you're really stuck on an error. And finally, dissect the source. And you can take this to mean pretty much however you want. Dissecting the Angular source code is going to broaden your understanding in ways that you can't imagine. Learning how providers actually work, how dependency injection actually works, is very difficult and it will take some time. But ultimately, it's going to make you an expert Angular developer. And I highly recommend it because the source code is very, very good. And this is not always the case. Take advantage of the quality of the source code and really dig into it. So these are some things that are going to help you think in the right way about AngularJS going forward. 